Hello world and welcome to another edition of the Enough Talk uh, L5R video podcast. I am the man who has it on good authority that women like it when you patronizingly <laughs> explain sports to them because everybody loves sports. They want to learn about sports, so I just I'll just explain it to them and then everyone will be happy. Uh, I'm Paul Ashman and I am joined by the man uh, who loves all-star teams, he wants to be a part of all-star teams, and yet he doesn't seem to think they ever quite work the way they're supposed to, Jesse Grabowski. Hi, Jesse. You gave me a lot of meat to dig in on this one, and I don't want to make, <laughs> I'll make sure we balance the threads here. I want to keep them both going. So the most success I've ever had with an all-star team was when I was playing NHL 98 on my computer <laughs> back in the day, and you could choose any team you wanted, but it always seemed to work better if you just chose the Eastern Conference All Stars. Really solid strategy for me. I tell you, you were very pleased with yourself that you identified the team with the best players would perform the best over a long run. It turns out when you reduce sports to just a series of meaningless statistics, the All Star team works extremely well. Um, in <laughs> reality, however, the All Star team tends to get beaten by the Czechoslovakian Olympic basketball team, for instance. Um, <laughs> Turns out a, a bunch of monstrous egos in the same room competing with each other. Not not the best idea. Yeah, uh, people always talk about uh, talk about also like in, in in baseball. It's like a, an individual sport, and who cares because it's baseball. Even though I love baseball, but stuff like uh, like basketball specifically where it's just like every guy is used to being the captain of his team and being deferred to it's like what happens when we take ruthlessly <clears throat> competitive kobe bryant and stick him on a team with lebron james it's like <clears throat> hey look these two guys each think they're the best player in the world i wonder what happens uh, and it turns out sometimes calamity yep uh so the whole all-star thing not really my bag every time all-star season sort of rolls around i zone out to the to the extent that I was ever zoned in. What's confusing to me is that it's supposed it's an exhibition game with no value, and people are supposed to be excited about it, and it's supposed to be for the fans. I'm a sports fan. I don't watch All Star games. I don't know why I'm supposed to care about this, right? Like, part of the fun of sports is the parochialism of rooting for your team. I don't want to see them being friends with people. I want them to be cutting those people in the face. Those are division rivals, man. <laughs> I don't. Uh, it doesn't do anything for me. Now to wrap back around to your other point about women in sports, I have a special. I have a special method of doing this, which I think makes everybody even happier. Is I refuse to use the sports terminologies. I use. I, I use <laughs> simpler terms that everybody knows. You know, I'll, I'll sit there for two. I'll sit there for an hour and a half explaining how the captain on the football team is going to be the one who decides where to throw the ball and they get four tries to try to make the ball down the field. <laughs> I so, think, so like what's a quarterback? Like this is the guy in charge, he's steering the ship. That's right. He's he's the sort of he's the head, he's the leader. So the leader gets to pick, see? Now he's in he's in his defensive area and so those other guys are going to create a breathing space for him. And then he's <laughs> <laughs> I think that everybody nice. everybody enjoys that thoroughly. Nobody thinks that it's patronizing. Nobody finds it to be obnoxious. I do it at every possible opportunity. Always work. Uh, how have how have the the Chinese girls responded to watching of the football? Uh, it's a really interesting experience. So they have absolutely no idea what was going on. The number one most uh, common com common feedback I got from them was the ball should be yellow. I can't find it. <laughs> which yes, I, uh, you know, which which actually I liked a lot. It reminded me like, of it reminded me of the I want to say two thousand one, maybe two thousand, maybe nineteen ninety nine, somewhere in the early two thousands, late nineties. Both thinking the same thing. I'm certain the, of it. The, yeah, hockey, the puck. hockey puck, the 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 highlighted yeah. hockey puck. Yeah, when they were shooting that the streaky puck. comment across the screen. I really wanted to know what season that was because man, was that terrible. Was it? It was one. I think it was one season that it was allowed to exist, and then yeah, they had to get one. rid of it. Or was it two? It was. It I was think like it was the a XFL on ice with highlighted pucks. It was like a fox in a bed. The best was always the slap shot, in which like the puck would accelerate so rapidly it would create the red line. 
Oh yeah, no, they like put in the extra graphics. They, I'm sure that they thought specifically, oh, this will this will make the slap shots even more exciting. They'll get the comet tail. It'll be on fire. It's like you're playing NBA Jam. Uh, turns out, no. <laughs> yeah, it turns out when people are watching a sport, they don't want to be reminded of. Though so the football yellow line for the first down marker, people just sort of accept. Like that's been yeah, part of the Yeah, you get the black line, you get the yellow line. It's that's pretty yeah. um, unobtrusive, though, and you know, they they somehow yeah. are able to do it so that it looks like the players are walking over. It just looks like it's part of the field. There's all these other little lines in the field. It's the fact that the thing is always moving around the the yeah. screen. And... <laughs> uh, it, reminds, it, it always felt like a, like a parent dangling his keys in front of us. Like, look at the look at the shiny thing. Oh, shiny, 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 peekaboo, peekaboo, peekaboo. <laughs> yeah. Well, look at the shiny thing. There we go. So, in L5R World, this is our second match. You get Whiplash on that one, Paul? Yep. No, I'm good. I'm good. This is, I am playing the Lion deck. I am the four seed. You are the underdog uh, yeah. in the five seed. So, so this not is, at all a matchup. Yeah, so this is, um, we're doing our little bracket. We've got our little January Madness, or whatever we're calling it, wrapping up for Kote season. Uh, if you haven't seen, the first match was Ray Sensei against Fiend. Uh, Scorpion Dishonor, and now we're going to play this one, continuing in this sort of unintentional trolley way, where like, good decks have bad matchups, it's like, hey, this is fun. Yeah, uh, you know, that's one of the things that happens in L5R, people talk about how it's a game about matchups, that that's probably the greatest variance part of L5R. And it will be on full display here. I'll do a quick rundown. I am playing a Lion deck. Uh, this is a Lion deck that I think every player has seen or every play group has one uh, build of. And it's, it's pretty straightforward. It's one of the more aggressive types. Uh, you've got the cheap personality suite here. Uh, there are low cost. I mean, this guy isn't, you know, you know, only here for the open ability, folks. Please don't pay any attention to the rest of this, whatever it is, okay? You're only ever going to shuffle it and make it 2-2-2. Two, 2-2 two, two. Two, two for 3, perfectly fine. And you gain an honor. Woohoo. Uh, and then I got Masato because the force of 5 is good and often will be 4 and disrupts with the hand. Ikanari and Ichimoku, the two best 5 gold cost scouts. And then my one... <clears throat> Air quotes, expensive personality is Mira because, hey, value. Uh, and then I got my 16 holdings here. I do have two abundant farmlands. Um, different builds of the deck that I played had Shigagawa's core. I was kind of a, a lone wolf traveling in a pack with only one or two other lone wolves on that. But it became abundant farmlands because of Serenity, which is a really potent card. I've kept in some colonial conscripts, so I will get to do things every now and again of like, you know, blow it up and get a colonial conscript for air quotes free. Uh, Fate side, it's a smattering of range attack effects, three deliberations, three unholy strike, three serenity. Um, in concert with springing the ambush, which is sort of unholy strike you know additional copies uh you just have to target your scout so you don't have to actually use the scout for the follow-up action so it's like there's gonna be a lot of like hey i spring in the ambush and then use a 3ph samurai and now i've made a ranged five attack and that's pretty great um two false roots which is my least favorite card it's a sort of sent home and or bailout card uh, expansive achievement is along with contentious terrain. You're sort of like you, you want to be able to be aggressive with lion decks. Um, you want to be able to take a province on turn four. That's an important pace marker. And this deck used to run even more things. There's a different, super more aggressive variance. It's even a little lower to the ground. It has, you know, inspired inspired devotion and. Uh, marshal your strength and those kinds of cards. I've, I'm not I'm not that all in, but I, you know, I want some acknowledgement that I want to build a swing. So I've got expansive achievement, contentious terrain, and then of course uh, scouting amid the snow is your your sort of contentious digger card. So you're generally going to have a contentious or access to a contentious. I got one crystal tears as a toolbox. And I think that's it. That's my only other scouting amid the snow target in this deck. That these false roots might become like an open roads and a train that gives my guy resilient. Uh, but that's not how I had the deck constructed for the tournament. And 
we wanted to just play the decks as they were locked in. I got Strike as the Earth and Wounded in Battle, Way of the Lion, uh, Chi Death combo kills are very strong. These cards have always been very good to me. Uh, helpful against decks to put down a lot of followers on individual units like, say, Crane. Uh, and Way of the Lion, obviously, is just blow things up, always good. Barango Scouts and Colonial Scouts, good followers that help ensure my ability to take a province on turn <laughs> four. It's a good deck. It's a fun deck. You know, buy guys attack, a very default presence of L5R. Um, and I like it a lot, and I wish I was playing one of my more metagamed versions that used to play 2 Purge of Taoism just to beat things like Big Corrupt Mantis, because this is going to be a really tough match. Yeah, Big Corrupt Mantis is awesome. It's still awesome. I feel like the wheels came off the Corrupt Mantis cart for a little while because people got too locked in on one specific build of it. The one that was well, running. there was a really interesting thread... You know, I, I, I both hate it and love it when we're so directly punctual in terms of how we relate to the zeitgeist of uh, the AEG. There's a thread talking about, like, net decks, and somebody <clears throat> mentioned uh, how the deck only sort of came into fruition when, well, Abbott, he won, like, I don't know, 18 Kotais or something, playing a Corrupt Mantis deck, and I guess that was the first... That's what put the deck out there. It was one of those decks that I think a lot of people had... Maybe they had like a more fallen dueling based Mantis deck or something. Uh, and he, you know, I, I didn't think, it never occurred to me that it wasn't a deck that was a popular thing among among the world at large. Um, because I tend to think everybody has a playgroup like we have a playgroup. And mm -hmm. obviously that turns out that that's not really true. Uh, but uh, he was the guy that played the deck, the champion the deck. And I'm not sure anyone else ever really had a lot of success. But I think a few other people maybe saw it and picked it up. But yeah, so I, I, I mean, I think it's it's success lives and dies. Was apparently lived and died by him and him alone. And so that's just a case of like, well, maybe people played a karmic strike or two or something. Yeah. Um, well, the deck has some weaknesses, and not just karmic strike. Uh, it is a deck that's yeah. trying to get a ton of mileage out of Weakness Exposed. That's your big play. Like, I'm going to have a 9, 10, Force guy. I'm just going to play a Weakness Exposed, kill your guy, and hope that's a good enough. And most of the time it is. Uh, but the deck it's is really susceptible to these weird draws. Yeah. Right, that's what I was about to talk about. That The biggest problem is you can kind of see it in my hand here. There's this split between cards that sort of do things, the red ones, and cards that don't really do things, uh, the blue ones. And you need these items to generate force and to get your idiots to be nice and big to avoid all the ranged attacks of Versatile Blade. There's a lot of different answers. Justice, really solid card family, so it's just force. But you don't want to draw them all at once. So you're opening hand, you want f four actions in one of these cards. So, but when you get three weapons or four weapons and, like, no actions, it can be really tough because the guys you're playing are all just cheap force. Well, they're all just... Big force, to the opposite of cheap force. Uh, like Nishoji. Efficient force, yeah. Yeah, Nishoji doesn't have any abilities. Uh, Ogre Bushi doesn't have any abilities. Patriku's got an ability. Miniku has got an ability, but not really. Like, Fear Fear 4 is not going to win you the game. So, like, all these guys are just huge cheap force, or huge efficient force. Um, so, you really do need some fate cards, some fate side support. I'm running the Irani Sensei build. That's to give me access to uh, Death of the Winds mostly, uh, and that's to try to answer, try to help me with that. Like I'm always going to have access to Weakness Exposed, or I'm always going to have access to a uh, Come One at a Time on the defense, uh, or just some sort of answery type card. I'm playing to Breaking the Rhythms, Way of the Crab as just catch all answers I can go grab with my Death of the Winds. Uh, overwhelming offense is just a solid battle action. I wanted something that just did something really powerful, and its focus value is a three for my duels, so it's it seemed like a pretty solid choice. Um, and then I'm trying Sun Returns too. The problem with this card is that all my guys are so expensive that I never really want to bow them. It's, it turns into like bow nine force to cancel something, which sometimes can get you there, but it maybe should be a one or a two of running threes. Yeah, you're. 
Your build here is a little bit uh, a little bit different than my build, but that's okay. I think that the 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 guts of these decks are all pretty similar. They're all gonna have tons of honor lost holdings. Yep. You're all gonna have JPI into. I mean, I think your holding setup is is more or less exactly where they're all gonna end up. Uh, and they're gonna lose tons of honor, so they have to play guys with dashes, and then that limits your personality base in such a way. Um, there are different ways to take the fate. There are non-dual decks. And they're all decks that play bigger items and this kind of stuff. So it, it's a good, solid deck, and you're going to see a build of it in, I think, any top eight, which is why we put one in our. Yeah, for sure. Uh, I do want to point out just that Lane of Immorality with JPI is a big breakthrough for this deck, and that if you haven't updated it with those two holdings, it, it really increases the consistency of, like, turn one, buy eight gold, like, go. And there's still, like the turn one by nine gold Yahtzee if you get three two for twos, but just having to flip a JPI plus any two for three uh, really puts the deck in a good place. It moves through its deck yeah, a little I... bit slower. I cut the um, famous bazaars for these, but it's worth it. Worth every penny. Okay. All right, now on to our game. 